Okay, so here's a video of finding the derivatives of some logarithmic functions. And I listed here some of the basic properties or the laws of logarithmic functions that might find uh, helpful as we go through its derivative. Okay, so given the function y equals log of x to the base a, where a greater than zero and a not equal to one, then as a gener generalization, it is a common knowledge that the derivative of log of u to the base a is equal to log of e to the base a all over u times du dx. And by applying this uh, relationship that log of x to the base a is equal to ln x over ln a, then we can still simplify this log of e to the base a as ln e over ln a. And then we can write the derivative of log of u to the base a as ln e over ln a du dx all over u. And we know that this ln e is equal to 1. Then the derivative of log of u to the base a can be written simply as 1 over u ln a du dx. Now, if we replace this a by e, okay, and then the log of u to the base a can now be written as log of u to the base e, which is equal to ln of u. And this is what we call the natural logarithm. Now, to find the derivative of l and u, so we use this uh, derivative, we just replace this a by e. So we have 1 over u ln e times du dx. And since ln e is equal to 1, then the derivative of ln u is equal to 1 over u times du dx or simply can be written as du over u. Now, for some examples, let us find the derivative of y equals log of 3x squared to the base 2. So we can see here that our u is represented by 3x squared and our du is 6x. Following this formula, then the derivative of log of uh, 3x squared to the base 2 can be written as log of e to the base 2 all over u, that's 3x squared, times the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. And then simplifying, this is 6x and this is 3x squared, then that can now be written as 2 log of e to the base 2 all over x. Or if you wish to use this formula, then this derivative can now be written as 2 over x ln a. Okay? Say we have log of 1 minus sine x to the base 3, then following this formula, then we have dy dx equals the derivative of 1 minus sine x all over, this is our u, okay, and then l and a. So that's derivative of 1 minus sine x all over 1 minus sine x l and 3. Okay? And you know that the derivative of uh, 1 minus sine x is negative cosine of x, and then we shall write dy dx as negative cosine of x all over 1 minus sine of x times l and of 3. Okay? Another one. Say we wish to find the derivative of ln 1 half x. And we know that this is our u, okay? And the derivative of 1 half x is equal to 1 half. So the derivative dy dx can be written as 1 half all over 1 half x. And then you can drop this off. So dy dx is equal to 1 over x. All right, so say y equals ln cube root of 2x cubed plus 5, and we wish to find dy dx. Now, to easily facilitate the derivative of y, we can simplify this function as okay, one-third ln of 2x cubed plus 5 because this ln cube root of 2x cubed plus 5 can be written as ln 2x cubed plus 5 raised to one-third. And then by applying the property r, ln x is equal to ln x raised to r, then you can just bring this on in front. Okay, so we shall have one third ln of 2x cubed plus 5. Okay, and then to differentiate, you just copy one third. Okay, and then that's one third. Then you differentiate 2x cubed plus 5, and that is 6x squared. And then you just bring this on the denominator. That's 2x cubed plus 5. Okay, and then we shall have one third times six x squared, okay, all over two x cubed plus five. And then simplifying, you shall have two x squared, that's one third times six x squared. So that's two x squared all over two x cubed plus five. Another one. Say we wish to find the derivative of ln cosine of three x. So since we are given an ln function, then we can use this formula that's 
derivative of u all over u and we know that our u is represented by cosine 3x so that's derivative of cosine 3x all over cosine 3x and we know that the derivative of cosine 3x is negative 3 sine of 3x all over cosine 3x and then since sine 3x over cosine 3x can be written as your tangent 3x and then finally your dy dx is equal to negative 3 tangent of 3x say y equals ln of secant of x plus tangent of x so we here we know that our u is represented by secant x plus tangent of x and then du is equal to secant x tangent x plus the derivative of secant tangent x is secant squared of x so we shall have secant x tangent x plus secant squared x all over this is our u secant x plus tangent x and then we can factor out secant x on the numerator leading us with dy dx equals secant of x times tangent x plus secant of x and then i think we can cancel this out so the only thing left is dy dx equals secant of x all right say we wish to find the derivative of y equals ln of ln x so again so u is represented by ln of x and then we know that du is equal to 1 over x. So we shall have 1 over x over ln x and then simplifying that can now be written as 1 all over x ln of x. Another one. Say we wish to find the derivative of y equals x over ln of x. And since this is written as quotient, then we might use the quotient rule. That's v du minus u dv all over v squared, where u is represented by x and v is represented by ln of x. So we have ln of x times derivative of x, which is 1, minus x times derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, all over the square of ln x. That's ln square of x. Okay. And then to simplify, ln x times 1 is simply ln x, and x times 1 over x is simply 1. So we shall have dy dx equals ln x minus 1 all over ln square of x. Another one, okay? Say we wish to find dy dx if y equals arc tangent of ln of x. So here, we shall recall that the derivative of arc tangent of u is equal to du over 1 plus u squared. And here, u is represented by ln of x. So du is 1 over x. So we shall have 1 over x all over 1 plus the square of ln of x. And then simplifying, we shall have dy dx equals 1 all over x times the quantity 1 plus ln square of x. Okay, say so we wish to find the second derivative of y in terms of x if y equals x times arc tangent of x minus ln of the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, since this is written as sum, then we might use the derivative of sum. And for the derivative of x arc tangent of x, we might use the derivative of product. And here we will be applying the derivative of an ln function. Okay, so differentiating x arc tangent x, so we shall have x times the derivative of arc tangent of x, which is equal to 1 all over 1 plus x squared plus arc tangent of x times the derivative of x, which is 1. Now, to easily facilitate the derivative of this ln square root of x squared plus 1, we can write this of the form ln x squared plus 1 raised to 1 half or 1 half ln x squared plus 1. So differentiating, the derivative of this is 1 half times derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. And then you just copy x squared plus 1 on the denominator. So we shall have negative 1 half times 2x all over x squared plus 1. And then simplifying, so we shall have x all over 1 plus x squared on the first term. Then arc tangent x. Then you just simplify this. 1 half times 2x is simply x. And then we shall have negative x all over x squared plus 1. So this can now be equal to 0. And then dy dx is now equal to arc tangent of x. To find the second derivative, and that is just equal to 1 all over 1 plus x squared. Okay, find dy dx if y minus ln of xy cubed equals 0. So here, you see that this one is an implicit function. The, then we might use implicit differentiation to find dy dx. And 
to easily facilitate the derivative of this function since ln of x y is equal to ln x plus ln y, then we can write this ln of x y cube as you copy y minus okay ln of x then minus three ln ln of y. So this ln of x y cube can be written as ln of x plus ln of y cube, and then this ln y cube can be written as ln x plus then this is L, this ln y cube can be written as three ln of y. And since this is preceded by minus sign, then we might distribute the minus sign on ln x plus 3 ln y. That's why this is negative ln x minus 3 ln y. And then we can now differentiate this with respect to x, and that will give us negative 1 over x. And then differentiating this with respect to y, so you affix dy dx, derivative of y in terms of y is 1. And then derivative of negative 3 L and Y in terms of Y is negative 3 over Y. And then to isolate dy dx, then we might transpose this on the other side, leading us with uh -huh, dy dx. Okay, and then you just get the LCD here. You combine these two, and that will give you Y minus 3 all over Y. And then transposing negative 1 over X on the right side will give us positive 1 over X. And by cross multiplication, we can now see that dy dx is y all over x times the quantity y minus 3. Okay. Find dy dx if y equals uh, cosine of x raised to sine x. Now, to easily facilitate the derivative of this function, we might get the ln of both sides. So that is ln y equals ln of cosine x raised to sine x. And again, applying the property ln x raised to r is equal to r ln x. Then this ln cosine of x raised to sine x can be written as sine x times ln of cosine x. And then we can now use the implicit differentiation since we can see that this is an implicit function. Okay, So we differentiate ln y with respect to y. So that's 1 over y dy dx. Okay. And then for the right side, use the product rule. This is your u and this is your b. So we shall have okay, 1 over y dy dx times you copy sine x. And then you differentiate ln of cosine x. So we have derivative of cosine of x. That's negative sine x. Then you just copy cosine x on the denominator. Plus this is our b. That's ln of cosine x. Then derivative of sine x is cosine of x. And then dy dx is equal to y times, you just simplify this, that's sine x times negative sine x, that's negative sine squared x all over cosine of x. And then plus, you just simplify this, that's cosine of x times ln of cosine of x. Cosine of x. And then the next thing to do is to replace y by cosine x raised to sine x. So finally, dy dx is now equal to cosine of x raised to sine x times the quantity negative sine squared x all over cosine x plus cosine x ln of cosine of x.